I'm heading into Tokyo in the evening to shoot a special film I picked up here in Japan. It's called Cyberpunk 640T and I basically just picked it out of pure curiosity. I did some minor research on the film stock but information seems to be sparse and I quit looking into it early on thinking why not just embrace the surprise. All I could find was a random comment on Reddit that said that the film is basically Sinister 800T so I do have an idea of what to expect but we'll see. Seeing as I have already shot in Shinjuku and Shibuya, I decided to try shooting somewhere not as central and thus came to Kichijoji, which seemed promising to me when I visited this place at daytime. So, I made it to Kichijoji now and I'm in a slightly quieter street and from here I'm going to work my way towards the station and right there, the, I just found a little street actually that looked quite busy and promising with lots of cool signs which I think will fit this film, so let's head there first. <coughs> So I was very excited to shoot this film in the night lights of Kichijoji. By the way, the film is tungsten balance, so that means it's pretty cold looking, which is always interesting, I find. This is the first shot of the evening, a simple look down the street. This was shot on the Pentax 50mm f1.7 lens, so the look is a bit more compressed which I find suits the scene very nicely. This first shot also featured a light leak, I don't know where it came from but I don't mind it too much. Then, as I was passing a restaurant on my right, I decided to halt and try to get a shot of the inside. To not look too weird, I kept my distance at first while metering the light and setting up the camera, and then I made my move. Here's the result, and I think we're off to such a good start. I really love this shot. It has this richness to it that I'm fond of when I find this type of photograph. What I mean is that the photograph is rather clear and has an unmistakable subject, yet you can find other points of interest within the composition, which lets the eye wander from one point to the next. In addition, this photograph has depth on top of that thanks to those points of interest being in different distances from the viewer's perspective. So mainly I'm referring to the person in the right corner who is part of the foreground, the people on the left who together with the main subject are part of the midground, and then finally the worker hiding behind the curtain who is part of the background. I'm really happy with this one. <笑>こんにちは。<笑><笑> <いっぱい撮ってきます。笑> Unlike the previous shot, this one shows the beauty of having just one subject. What I love here is how the subject is actually not what makes the photo, at least for me. It's the environment in which the subject is that I find intriguing, however the subject gives the composition structure and allows for the eye to have a place to rest and then explore the surroundings. I love how full the space is and all the objects we as the viewer can analyse, such as the menus or the bowls or the flowers in the foreground. Those are especially interesting to me and add an extra layer of storytelling. Why are the wrapped flowers in this restaurant? Were the workers gifted these? Or is this maybe a gift that the worker is going to give to a person they're meeting after dinner now? Who knows? Here's another shot down the street, however it's not as good as the previous one I think. It gives a nice impression of Kichijoji, however it isn't as powerful because it lacks the points that go beyond it just being an impression. And don't get me wrong, I love impressions, but I'm so fond of the weight the other photos had that this one in comparison feels a little empty.
This photo is similar to the previous one, but better I find, because there's a clearer focus on a specific subject. In this case, the person adds the weight that I was previously missing. Here the person is close enough and hence big enough in frame that it sparks my curiosity wondering what kind of person this is and where they're heading to. Here I found a wonderful subframe I could make use of and so I tried to get a shot of the cooks. This is what I got, and I like it a lot. The subframe worked out splendidly, and again, there's a lot of interesting stuff to look at. I just wish the cook at the back were facing this way, but I was uncomfortable waiting any longer, so I pressed the shot at this moment and moved on. Then I found another great subframe and just couldn't resist. The result is alright, but not really special, but I might just think that due to my bias, because I'm comparing it to a similar shot that I photographed in Shinjuku, which I think is better than this one because the subject is more intriguing, maybe because we can see a bit more than here. So you know before I said I love impressions, that is what I was about to attempt here, I liked the plastic cover that blurred the guests and thought it could be cool to shoot through it. Here's the result, and I like this a lot. It's rather abstract, yet clear enough to recognize what is happening. Also, the colors look phenomenal. On this street, I found a nice spot from where I could get a semi-low angle shot of a nice scene, but I waited a little for some people to enter the frame. This is what I ended up shooting, and I think it's alright. I like the subject, the fact that one is on a bicycle and two are not just casually walking, but actually carrying a big bag, which I find makes the subject more dynamic than if they were just casually walking. However, I do think there's a lot of room for improvement, but what I'm thinking of would probably require staging or a lot of luck. Imagine someone using the machine on the left and the cyclist in the middle, and the two people with the bags on the right of the frame. That would again create these points of interest that the eye can wander from one to the other, but this feels a little bit cluttered in the middle. I like it nevertheless, but I just wanted to share what I'm dreaming of. This is alright, but not that special. I like the location, but I miss the one subject or something else that makes the shot stand out. Then I had found a cool composition of the Yorobashi camera sign with the traffic light in the foreground and was waiting for the light to turn red to get the shot. Here's the result, and it's pretty cool I find. I'm not entirely happy though with the position of the traffic light. I feel like it's a bit too far to the edge and about to be cut off, but that was the best position I could find while still keeping the right amount of distance to the building's lights. Next, I came into a street where I found a cool building that was a splash of yellow in the scene, and so I set up a composition and waited for a couple people to enter the frame. This is the result, and I like it. The pop of colour works really well in contrast to the otherwise blue scene. I'm also quite fond of the composition. The people on the left and the couple on the right balance out the points of interest really well. And that is how my dirty old Pentax K1000 magically became this shiny new one. 
I'm just kidding, of course. This clean Pentax K1000 was gifted to me from today's sponsor, which I'm very excited about because they are a camera shop. Let me introduce you to Cute Camera Co. Cute Camera Co. is a camera shop with the mission to make the process of beginning with film photography easy. In my beginner guide for film photography, I told you about the different ways you can buy a film camera, one of them being via a camera shop. And the main reason you'd want to do that is the safety. I've personally bought many cameras from random sellers on private secondhand markets and three times already that didn't work out for me, and so I have three cameras that are not fully functional. Cute Camera Co. is the easy way to get a camera because they freshen up and fix film cameras and grade them according to the quality. Plus, they have a 30-day return or exchange policy if your camera does happen to have an issue. And to be extra safe, you can even buy a camera protection plan, which means if your camera stops working a couple months down the line, you can send it back to them and they will fix it, or if unfixable, give you a replacement. So I think you get the point, this is the super safe route to get into film photography and I'm super grateful that they reached out to me and want to support me and my work here, so big thank you to Cute Camera Co and please do check them out. By the way, I asked them to send me a Pentax that was graded as average, so the worst they have, and yet look at the incredible difference to mine. My Pentax would be graded as complete garbage. come to the station where I found myself in front of a big pachinko building. In case you don't know, pachinko describes a game center basically where people go to gamble. I was drawn to the large red signs that rise above the busy street and so I set up a vertical shot and waited a little again for some people to be in the right position. Here's the result, and I think it's pretty cool. The subject I was mainly waiting for is this person in a suit on the road. They're close enough to the camera to have a certain level of significance that acts as a weight to balance out the composition. By the way, as you might have noticed by now, this evening's session is full of vertical shots, which has been a topic of discussion in the last couple of videos. I remember that here it just suited the scenes so well oftentimes because I was photographing signs like these that themselves are vertically oriented. So I guess this was some good practice. these three standing around in this corner and saw a potential composition and I kind of like the outcome. It's one of those triangle situations again, which I always like, however I do think there's more potential here. I think the shot would be even better if the person on the right were closer to me to create more depth in the shot and have each person on their own layer. Next, I shot this photo of the crowd all walking to Kichijoji Station. It's very much a POV shot and I like it a lot actually, it feels action packed and somehow exciting. Here I spotted this traffic worker and saw some potential in a low angle shot with the LED advertising in the background. Here's the result, and I love it. I think the angle is pretty epic with the people whizzing by and the advertising backlighting the subject. I was lucky though that there was a light right above as well to really give the subject enough light. <laughs> so that was a funny moment. The shot turned out wildly underexposed though, but I think it's still okay seeing as I consequently got this nice silhouette. <laughs> the 
This shot turned out pretty cool. I must have miscalculated the lighting slightly because this one too seems a bit underexposed, but on the other hand it also gives it this very gritty look, which I don't think is too bad. What I like in the composition is again the depth created by the layers upon layers of people in this case. This shot is also not too bad. I like the double action of foreground and midground. The subject is clearly the cook in the midground, highlighted by the strong light. But I love how in the foreground I was able to capture this moment of laughter. Here, I do wish it was a little brighter though, so that the shadows in the foreground are this dark and gritty. <laughs> This shot looks kind of epic. I love how the walls have a strong leading lines type of effect. This was a quick spontaneous shot that I caught impulsively because I instantly liked the scene and how there was just one lone subject walking down the tunnel. The lighting and colour look pretty cool here. I'm loving the colour contrast of the blue cast of the film against the red tones of the lamps and the light halations. Here too, I love the colour contrast and again the composition works out in layers quite nicely. <laughs> then here, I saw an interesting character coming my way and so I framed up a shot. This is the result and I like it. The low angled hat that hides the face gives the character a mysterious look that I enjoy. If there's one thing I would like to improve though, it's just the timing. I think if I had waited a little longer, the separation of the subject and the background would have worked better. Here, I had come to one of the busiest streets in Kitijoji that is your typical Tokyo entertainment and food street that houses restaurants, bars, and karaoke. I shot this simple, wide, establishing shot, which kind of lacks a subject in the foreground, but I still like it simply because I'm still blown away by the look of this street. Next, I wanted to shoot a low angle composition of the iconic blue karaoke sign with the red writing. I wanted to go low angle to include the people passing on the street in the composition's foreground. This is the result, and I think it worked out quite alright. I'm fond of the angle, it has something dramatic to it. As this taxi passed me and then tried to move through the crowd, I thought this was a great opportunity for a photograph and shot this. What intrigued me was how the car was trying to make its way through the people, which I find makes for an interesting scene. While the following was not on purpose, I find the slightly tilted angle perfect because it adds a sense of chaos which suits the character of the photograph. Then, seeing as I couldn't check my shots, I decided to shoot one more composition of the blue karaoke sign with some people passing in the foreground. This is the result, and I think this one too turned out pretty cool looking. I think I prefer the angle in relation to the people over the first attempt, but the exposure works out better here in my opinion.
next, I decided to shoot a photograph of this group that was hanging out here. I don't remember why or what intrigued me here, but I think it was just their energy that I thought would be cool to capture. <laughs> here is what I got, and I love it. I think this turned out so cool. I love that the guy at the back noticed me and posed while the rest of the group remained candid. Especially the epic windblown hair looks great. I'm very happy with this shot. I spotted a scene that contrasted the previous places. Unlike the fully packed restaurants and bars that I had passed, this one had one guest peacefully enjoying the dinner. I framed up a photograph featuring them and got the shot. This is the outcome and I think it's wonderful. It really captures the peace and solitude of the person that I wanted to bring across. Then, it was time to shoot the final shot of the evening. I was standing next to a bar and had just watched a couple of friends say goodbye and part ways. One of them was now walking down the street and so I figured they could be a cool subject in the otherwise empty street. Here's the result, and I like it. The buildings around the subject are so interesting. Also, look at those power lines at the back, lots of details to look out for in this shot, which I like, and the subject just adds that touch of structure to the photograph. And that was the end of this wonderful night of photography. Actually, I did end up shooting some more later that evening on my way home, but that's for another day. I hope you enjoyed coming along and maybe you liked some of the photographs too. Before I say goodbye, I would like to thank the lovely Patreon community that is supporting me and my work here. Thank you so much. If you're interested in extra videos, Lightroom presets, or even physical postcards, you can check out my page via the link in the description. With that said, thank you for being here, and I hope to see you again soon. Until then, goodbye.